Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be learning the inset tool. And to do that, we're going to create some die, some dice, some dices, however you say it. But these are going to be little dice that we use pretty much only using the inset tool. So let's go ahead and dive on in it. So let's go ahead and make a new project, general. And unfortunately, we do not need Suzanne the monkey. So let's go ahead and delete her with X. And I'm just going to slide down this because we don't really need to see all that. And click on your flexible design. And we're going to add a flexible design here. So just hover over here, shift A. We're going to do a cube. So everyone bring in a cube into your projects. And let's increase the size here. You should have a little drop down. So bring that up and maybe do like, I think die are like 19 millimeters. So you can do 19, 20 millimeters, something like that. So that is the basic shape of our dies. And we're done, just kidding. Next, let's add a bevel modifier just for fun. And maybe for amount, you can do 0.5 and for the segments, three. And there we go. So now we've, it looks more like a dice and it also helps us just see if we ever break our design or make it non-manifold. So next, let's go into edit mode and today we are going to go to the next tool, which is inset faces. And before we dive into inset faces, what we want to do is just slice this cube up a little bit so it's a little easier to turn into a die. So go up to edge and do subdivide. And then with the little drop down here, crank that bad boy up to two cuts. So we want number of cuts to be two and notice it's kind of hard to see here, but we should have uh, six little squares on each side. And that's going to make it easy to make the die. And I'm going to change the look up for this lesson. And let's go to our little drop down here and let's turn on the mat caps. And if you click on this little sphere here, you can pick any different color. You don't have to do this, but um, I really like this one. It just looks really funky and, uh, you know, looks better than just a gray on gray. Hey, so let's stop goofing around and go to town on this inset cube. So make sure you still have your cube selected. And one thing you could do, say if we didn't have that selected, you could always just click on, you know, one of these little faces here and click I, and that will inset your, uh, you know, that will kind of call upon the inset tool uh, with your keyboard shortcut there. That's usually what I do, but today we're going to teach the actual tool. You could also hold control while you still have that open and that will do the depth. So pretty cool. Kind of looks like the extrude, but it's different. So uh, just undo that. But I just wanted to show you that you have keyboard shortcuts with the I for inset. And if you hover over, it says it right there, little I. Uh, but let's actually use the tool. Notice when we have the tool selected, you've got this little yellow pin kind of sticking out there. And what I want you to do is switch to front view and grab this front face right here. And what's cool about this tool is that we can just type in the numbers. So just kind of start, uh, you know, pushing in some inset tools. And essentially inset is just taking the outer edge and shrinking it and bringing it in. But it's along the same plane as the original face. So, you know, it's not sticking out or anything. It's just uh, sliding it in. But what's cool is down here in this little inset faces tool, you can type in the thickness. So we could do, maybe we want it two millimeters. And there we go. So what it's saying here is that the distance all around the square is two millimeters around each one. So if we turned off this uh, offset even, notice it will change a little bit. And what that is saying is it's two millimeters from this point to this point. And it's actually like 1.4 from here to here. So there is a difference between offset even and just, um, you know, not having that on or off. Uh, by default, it's going to be on. So um, that's, you know, two millimeters around on each side. So just so you know that if you're doing precise measurements, but enough with the boring stuff, let's keep going. So now let's inset it again just a little bit, uh, but we're just going to keep all the values at like two today. So for thickness, do 0.2. So we're just going in just a little bit. And then for depth, let's go negative two. And there we go. And the reason we typed these in is because we're going to do that 
around the entire cube. And that way we know for 100% sure all these little dots that are on our, on our dice here are exactly the same. And notice there's a bunch of different checkboxes and we're gonna go over pretty much all these today. Uh, but first thing you need to know is that the inset will bring in the edges and make some new geometry and the depth will push it in or out. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's go to the other side and grab these two, hold shift. So we have two selected. And now if we do the inset, it's gonna just do that same inset. We can type in two and there we go. And then next, just inset that just a little bit. And you can type in you know, point 0.2 or point 0.1 or anything you want. And then for the depth, we're gonna do negative two. And there we go. So we can also do two faces at once. And then let's go on this side. Let's highlight all three of these. And the same thing, you know, you can do all three at once. So we'll do two and then do a new inset just a little bit. We'll do 0.2 and you guessed it, negative two. The one big difference is say if we selected all these, so just go to your, uh, your, your backside here on the opposite side of the one. So if we grab all six of these, then if we did an inset, watch what happens here. Oh, so we were, we were wanting them to do, you know, the individual faces, but since all of these polygons that we selected were all touching each other, Blender just assumed that we're trying to get an edge around, um, you know, the entire selected area. But what you can do is use this little tool down here and do individual. So just check that individual box and notice we're getting the desired result. So we can just change that to two and then the depth we can do zero and there we go. And since none of these faces are touching anymore, you know, they all have some space in between them. When we inset, we don't have to do the individual on that one. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, so you only have to do it when the faces that you select are all touching. And then for these, we're gonna do point 0.2, just for a little bit of an inset, and then the depth, negative two. So that's the difference between the individual and the, you know, just normal selecting. And notice we've got some kind of bumpy edges going on here um, with our bevel. Um, and you can keep that if you like it, uh, but I'm gonna keep mine kind of straight edged. So I'm gonna go to my limit method on the bevel modifier and just switch that on over to angle. And that will straighten it up a little bit. And oh my gosh, students, what have we done? If you haven't saved, go ahead and save. If you have already saved, 100 points to you. 100 useless points to your design career. You are developing excellent habits I have forgotten. So let's go ahead and save as, and we'll just call this inset, and there we go. Now, we are truly ready to design. So let's keep on keeping on with these cubes. And so you can also do it, uh, you know, a little more crazy if you wanna grab the top ones here and, you know, do the, the five at the bottom it will do it all at the same time. So if we inset, but again, we'll just go ahead and type in two and that will make sure we have the same size and it's done the same on the bottom. So that is awesome. And then we'll just do it again, do point two and the depth, you guessed it, negative two. And there we go, we've got a dice that we've done completely with the inset tool. You can turn your bevel on and off if you want. You can crank it up even more. If you want even more of a bevel, I'm just gonna leave mine at 0.5. And that's looking pretty cool. So this is kind of your, your simple, normal dice that could be 3D printed. Um, we can just rename it real quick, call it dice, and go to our 3D print toolbox to check all and zeros. All right, that's great. We do have some overhanging faces, uh, but that should be fine. This will all bridge just nicely. And then since, make sure you have everything zeroed out and then you can go to export, tell Blender where you want to save the, the file and do export. 